Hi everybody. Hopefully I'm not in too much of a shadow here. Today I'm going to talk to you about pathological envy, especially because it again contradicts everything that we come to believe about what we what, what normal people come to think about parents. And as a parent yourself, it contradicts everything that's natural to you. So for instance, I want everything great for my kids. I want them to have, I want them to be better than me. I wanted them to be better than me at everything. I wanted them to have, there was any amount of joy or success that they could have. I didn't compare it to, to me at all. I, I you know, I, I wanted the very best for them in all aspects. A lot of this is very centered on family and how there will be pathological envy that is in relationships that you wouldn't think would have it. In particular, parents and, and how devastating this can be. So you might, as a child, for instance, as I did, you might do things thinking that it's gonna be what makes your parent proud of you. And in effect, you really have a small box that you can be in because if you were not to succeed, if you were to be a failure, that would also not fly, right? If you were to be unpopular and un, you know not liked, and all that that would that would also be something that would be something that would meet with their criticism, and you know a different kind of you get a different a different version of the narcissistic abuse for you to go that direction. And narcissists want so much to be the best. I had deep, long-lasting friendships. I had what I believed was a good relationship with my brother. I had I, I connected well with people. I um, had a very deep relationship with my children. I really did not realize how envious of me my mother was until the moment came for her to do this narcissistic abuse. And when the moment came for her to act out on it, she really did. And and so when the smear campaign came and all that, she took really a pathological joy in personally destroying my relationships and, she, and seemed to get a sadistic pleasure in the fact that my marriage she didn't look at it as a like a protective mother of this guy is abusing my daughter she looked at it as haha she doesn't have the you know she doesn't have the marriage that she thought she did or she, her marriage is failing after all you know kind of a thing and the worst of it all of course was with my son the family in general they did not do what needed to be done for children you know if they were if they wanted to do what's best for the children they would have been protective of their mother and they would have been protective of trying to keep peace in the family and trying to keep, you know, trying to, you know, make sure that their, their mother had, was going to be safe and secure to continue on even after her marriage ended. And that was not at all what anyone's interest was in. They were definitely into that, you know, uh, talking behind my back, creating tons of chaos, making life really, really difficult for me, next to impossible for me. And, and this never let up, you know, this never, ever let up. The more my son struggled, the more satisfied a sadistic pleasure my mother was getting, I realize now. And when he died, that was a feather in her cap. I realized that only based on how the behavior has been since, because nothing that she does is what you would do if you were really a grieving grandmother or you really cared about your daughter. I mean, it definitely is. There is this. There is a clear sense of satisfaction in the way that they are that they were they're behaving. So pathological envy is really um, baffling. It's really baffling. It is. It is one of the signs in the DSM of a narcissist, of what of what a, you know narcissistic personality disorder is all about. It can be as uh, petty and small as being envious of someone being thin if you're overweight or. Uh, anything, any any perceived, and they have this perception. They don't. They don't probably have any idea what your real life is like. They have a perception that your life is. They they have this idea about how great your life is because of however they're perceiving it in their head in a twisted way. Clearly, that was what you know what was happening here, and so they have this sadistic pleasure and the the reason what proves it really is the result you know they prove who they are and how they act i would never have you know years back i would never have been able to say that my that there was pathological envy in my family for instance but i know it now because of how they acted and and what the net result was but they love the idea of bringing you down and they will they will they will just bring you down and they have a, a very convoluted sense of what 
their entitlement is too. So this is the other thing is they will have they don't have any guilt. They don't have guilt or remorse. So they'll take things from you, and their only real concern is whether or not they can get away with it, whether or not they're going to have shame, because they know that people don't like thieves, people don't like like bad mothers. The situation opens itself up where they have the green light to go ahead and do things like basically steal from you or, or sabotage relationships or do whatever they can do, and they have a way of doing it where they're not going to be looked at as bad, they're not going to be identified, they're not going to be exposed for what is really going on. They can couch it in some kind of concern or that they will go for it and they will feel entitled to taking and destroying anything that they want. They have no, they live in a fantasy world and so they they really just don't care what it's doing to you. And the, the way that kind of, if you're trying to understand narcissistic abuse intellectually, it's one thing, but when you're trying to understand it based on your own situation, your own family, it's yet another. And for me, one came way before the other. And so I, I could understand it, it, narcissistic abuse intellectually. And I basically had it all figured out when it came to my ex-husband. I had that all figured out. But when it, when it came to my primary first relationships, my mother, father, my brother, that was slower in coming. I just wanted to make excuses for them for as long as I possibly could. And so with them, it was much more like, the breadcrumbs were left and there was so much overwhelming evidence that I had no choice but to accept that that's what it was. That, you know, I for so long tried to make excuses like, oh, you know, that it's going to turn out to be that they were duped or it's going to turn out to be that they were really concerned and, you know, they were just misled, misguided. And enough has gone on for enough time now that it's clear that that was not ever the case. Basically, that's pathological envy is one of the criteria of the DSM about six personality disorder. In their minds, what they what they want is like a need. If one, there was one of the same. And if they need it, they're entitled to take it. They're entitled to have it. They're entitled, if they, just, if they destroy it from you, that's as good as having it themselves. There's no sense of right and wrong, no sense of I shouldn't do that because that makes that that's just not a decent thing to do. That's not what a good person would do. You know, they don't even think about things like karma or I gotta look myself in the face. I gotta look, you know, I gotta, I gotta face myself, my own conscience. No, there is none of that. There is none of that. Their only concern is a practical concern of it can I get away with it? Can I do this without people thinking badly of me? And if they were to get caught doing something, then then their what would what some people would interpret as remorse is really shame. It'll be all about I feel terrible. I feel I feel terrible. And if you if you talk to them about you know how could you do that to me? Don't you think I feel bad enough already? You need to keep bringing it up. There's really very little concern about my feelings ever. There's very little concern about my son's feelings ever. It was always about how they were going to be viewed and how they could see themselves that they wanted to be seen as good people and it really really isn't at all about being a good person it isn't really about being a loving family it isn't about any of that it's about looking like one and that is good enough for them if they look like a loving family that's good enough they don't really care about being a loving family they don't care about being a good person they just want to look like one and so if they can serve their pathological envy and they can take from you what they want to take from you and still come off looking like a good mother and even better if they if now you've been scapegoated and they can be like oh poor us uh, she abandoned us and she did this and now, now I'm a victim so take from her everything that I want plus be a victim oh my gosh that's a bonus there's no thoughts about what it's done to their daughter what it's done to their grandson what it's done to their family no thoughts about that at all. All that they care about is how they're being perceived, even in their own, even to themselves. They're entitled to whatever they want to be, whatever they want, they're entitled to it. And they want to be the best, they want to be whatever, and they will take, even from their own children, anything that injures, that feels like a narcissistic injury. And it is a narcissistic injury for their child, in some cases, for their child to be well-liked, for their child to be successful, more popular, or anything than they are. Especially if, you know, I was a, I was connected, I connected well with people, I connected, I felt deeply for people, I felt deeply for my friends, I had a lot of empathy and a lot of whole real love with my relationship. And she, my mother, 
it's so clear how much she loves the idea that those relationships, the, the idea of ruining those relationships. Beware of pathological envy. It is a very, very dangerous and destructive force in narcissistic personality disorder people. They will stop at nothing. They feel entitled to just anything at all. They can, and anything they can justify, anything they can get away with. And they, they will basically, they can justify anything they can get away with. That's basically the criteria. If they can get away with it, they can justify it. If they, you have something they want, they will take it from you. They will, you know, just sabotage you in any way that they can. And as long as they can get away with doing it and looking like they, like they're still a good person or, or like you did it to them, that's all that's required. Reality, there's no place for reality here. It does not matter. Okay, you guys, thanks a lot. Um, please give me a thumbs up. And if you haven't already, please subscribe. Talk to you later. Bye-bye.